The last um, um, thing I want to talk about, uh, a context, is the context of home. Because um, in home, of course, there are such graces and such trials and complications as well, you know. And one of the trials for me growing up and for all of us in the family was my dear father. He had tuberculosis. Uh, he was ill all my life. Um, he died when I was 14. But he was a great man. And one of the ways, one of the only ways that in which he could really show himself as a loving father was on Saturday nights. I was one of eight children. I was second youngest. And we would be bathed by my mother or someone. And then one by one, we'd travel up the dark stairs to this uh, lighted room where my father would be sitting there waiting for us. And he would dry our hair one by one. Your, your turn came and you went over and knelt in front of him. And he'd be drying your hair. But then the big moment was he would put his hands up to the fire and put them back on your head, your bowed head, and back and forward. And the love you experienced through his hands was something I can't describe. And especially when he was normally so weak. But um, I mention, and, and I want to, if I may read and finish with a poem I wrote um, about this uh, experience. And I read it not just because it's a little personal biographical memory, beautiful though it is, but because um, one of the things most of us here, I suspect, like myself, have um, were baptized when we were babies. The biggest grace any of us received was baptism, but we don't remember it because we were babies. And one of the beautiful things about this experience of my father, it had the elements of baptism. So it reminds me of the grace of baptism, of what really it's like, of the, the father's love. And through the hands of his son, you know, we're blessed. And we need, our hearts can become so cold and hurt through the trials of life. And we need to remember and re-experience, be re-baptized by the grace of baptism. It's there in us, welling up within us. But we need to remember, and sometimes good, short, Memories of childhood or other times in our life can bring back, can be like a symbol of that grace and blessing. The fire that's involved in baptism, with the, my father sitting beside the fire, and the water uh, when we were washed. So here is the humble poem, and I'll finish with this, called The Second Youngest. I just read a few stanzas. My hair still dripping wet after the bath, and with at last the large white towel which had hung over my shoulders, now in his hands. I thought, as I knelt on the ground before my father, and he dried my hair and talked, I was the son of a god. It was the same warmth, the same repeated ritual for all of us, my four brothers and my three sisters, when in turn, after our bath, we would climb the dark stairs to the lighted room where my father sat in his chair. We were, I suppose, like small initiates, the girls in their coloured nightgowns and red slippers, and the boys with our white towels across our shoulders, wearing pyjamas, but naked from the waist up. I was five, or at most six years old, the second youngest. But once I had braved the darkness of the stairs alone, my trial was over. From shadows into light, the door opened, and I stepped into the hush of the room. So vivid, I remember, that bright threshold. But real illumination came moments later when I knelt down next to the fire, as near as I could to my father's chair, and bowed my head. I remember, as soon as he began to dry my hair with the towel and warm my hair with his hands, lifting his two palms to the fire and letting them rest on my head, I thought I was the son of a god. Thank you.